when you look at Miles as a character, and I think if, if we all kind of watch Miles and we sat down and talked and someone mentioned that Miles has anxiety, I think we would all kind of like, yeah, that, that fits, right? And so the most important thing was I, I didn't want to create a problem that didn't exist. If it, if it wasn't right for Miles, then it would have been right for the short. There was a layer of relatability even before he hit the silver screen that I think the character was just able to capture. And that's something that I really wanted to kind of sing here. And I hope that that shines through. But to me, he was the perfect vessel, um, the perfect person to use. And how rare is it as, as fans of the character do we get to see him in a quiet moment? How's it going, man? I'm Daniel. Hey, good morning, guys. Great to see you. Uh, I've watched a few of your videos, so I'm already a fan. Oh, oh wow. Wow. So, yeah. I'm grateful to be with you guys this morning. What's going on? We watched one of your videos and we're also a fan as well. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I think I know which one you're referring to. <laughs> my name is Shabazz. My name is Shabazz. I mean, but you know that now because you've seen our stuff, so it works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're so grateful for you sharing your time with us, man. Honestly, like uh, the Spider Verse world has meant so much to us. It means so much. Means the world to so many people, and um, you know, we, we were lucky to talk with the directing team and the cast last year for Cross the Spider Verse, and I don't think we've ever come down after watching that film and watching Into the Spider-Verse. So to be able to continue yeah. with you today and for you to be kind of handed that baton, that's amazing. How does it feel now to be, to have this film releasing in the world? Oh, it's amazing. I've, you know, it's been a long time coming. I, I finished this film over a year ago, if you can believe it. Wow. Um, and so it's always held this great weight in my heart um, because I, I feel like it's, you know, I, I like it. I love Miles. I think he's he's one of my favorite characters. And so... To be a part of that universe, to be carrying the torch um, from the incredible filmmakers that we got to just experience uh, Spider-Verse last year and be a part of that. It does feel incredible. It feels like an honor. It feels like a privilege. And um, my my hope really is that, you know, it just feels like, I said this before too, but I, I hope it feels like a love letter to fans of Miles Morales and fans of the character in the universe. So it's amazing to carry the torch. That's amazing. And I mean, like you said, like, it is definitely a love letter. You see that for sure. And this is must have been an amazing opportunity to get the call to direct the Spider-Verse story. And this is your first, this is the first project also under the Lens program, which probably in itself is very stressful of environment, which plays into the into the themes of the, of the film. What was, what was that like for you to kind of spearhead all this? Yeah, um, it can be, it can be stressful, um, but it can be a lot of fun. I, I was called in to direct something at Sony to direct a short and I didn't know what it was going to be. Uh, but I said, yes, blindly, of course. Right. And, um, and I, I had a, a binder full of reasons why I should be allowed to play with Miles Morales. And so I was, I was all prepared to whip that out. And they said, before I could do it, what do you think about, um, doing a spider verse short? <laughs> and I thought, well, I just put my huge tome back in my backpack and well, it sounds great. Um, you know, if I, um, can I make it scary? And they said, yeah, don't see why not. Okay. And then everything kind of just fell into place from there. So it, I, I have to say it was really smooth. It was natural and it didn't feel as stressful as it might seem. I think, um, I think some of my, my least stressed times were during the production of this short. Um, and I really attribute that to it being such a crossroads of my passions like i love talking about mental health i love spider-man i love heroes and and i love filmmaking and so to be able to marry all those three things together it, it was something else i really felt like i was living my best life while i was making this short what would you say from like from start to finish of this whole project how long would you say it took you to kind of get this all pushed out in the way you wanted it to it took about nine months wow and that wow. is from that's from conception to you know sound like when the sound was wrapped and on the sound stage that was about nine months of work wow that's incredible that's a that's a really though that, that feels accelerated <laughs> yeah but that that's amazing that you guys were able to mm -hmm. to have that to come out and i know you wrapped last year you guys showed it at the the Annecy F festival last year um mm -hmm. so ever since that we've just been like we been need jealous. to watch this we've been jealous of you know, everyone that got we, yeah. and we've been wanting to talk to you about it too which is <laughs> it's, it's dope that it's finally 
it's out in the world for for people to see it and you know you mentioned mental health and i think you know so many of spider-man's stories have been some of our favorite ones have to deal with like spider-man but also you know peter parker or what miles morales is up to and we've mm-hmm. seen how mental health has played an effect on spider-man's powers before like i'm thinking spider-man 2 um so yeah. like how did you want to manifest anxiety for someone like miles yeah well i think the most important thing was to not give miles a problem that he didn't have you know what i mean i um i love miles like most people that care about miles really care about miles it's not really like a soft fandom uh you know he's in our hearts i didn't want to give him something that he wouldn't really deal with just for the sake of telling a story when you look at miles as a character and i think if if we all kind of watch Miles and we sat down and talked and someone mentioned that Miles has anxiety. I think we would all kind of like, yeah, that, that fits. Right. And so the most important thing was I, I didn't want to create a problem that didn't exist. If it, if it wasn't right for Miles, then it would have been right for the short. And anxiety and mental health is something that I felt like I always had in common with Miles. Um, from when the character first dropped back in, you know, back when Sarah Pakelly was on the art and it was, uh, coming out weekly for the first time, I was picking this book up. I love Miles, and yeah, I just there was a there was a layer of relatability even before he hit the silver screen that I think the character was just able to capture, and that's something that I really wanted to kind of sing here, and I hope that that shines through. But to me, he was the perfect vessel, um, the perfect person to use. And how rare is it as as fans of the character do we get to see him in a quiet moment um, where he's not flailing his arms and throwing jokes and and being the amazing miles that we know um i really wanted to have a quiet moment with him as as a fan i mean selfishly i just wanted to sit with him and you know what does what does miles think after a long day that to me was a was a real treat you mentioned too um having spider-man stories in the past and things like that i i just want to do a quick shout out to spider-man blue one of my favorite you know comics of all time which is peter parker focused but you know, there there has been a long history of the character of Spider-Man enduring some of the complexities emotionally and mentally in life. I think that's why he's such a strong character. It's also why, um, you know, Sony Pictures Animation has just killed it time and time again with the Spider-Verse movies. When you're working with a character like this that's so beloved and he has so many layers of complexity and so many dimensions, to me, it's just like a joy and an honor to bring those dimensions to light. So it didn't really feel like I was inventing some other part of him it's kind of a long answer to your question but what i'm trying to say is i didn't i didn't feel like i was inventing some other part of miles i just felt like i was showing a different dimension of him uh and how rich and how how complex he is and i and i I think that's totally true to who to who his character is and what we've seen them go through at this point of their career like this is uh this is still a kid going through you know, the most traumatic events that somebody could go through, right? And I love that, you yeah. know, we, you know, we start this short with, you know, Miles on his own, and then we're ending it with him, you know, reaching out, getting help, going for that talk with his dad. Um, and it's, it's a great, like, just parallel from, like, beginning to end of, like, where, you know, where he started and where he's hopefully walking in a better direction as as it's ending. And I think that's just, uh, it's, it's such a simple like sh- shot. I mean, not technically for you guys to make it, but just the idea of like this, oh, yeah, this person is not working, this person's not walking alone anymore. So it's just visually, yeah. I think it's it such a, for sure. Yeah, it's a beautiful moment. It's it's powerful, like the, the idea of going together, right? And, um, and, you know, look, it's not like Miles spills, spills the entire beans right at the end. He doesn't say, hey, I'm, by the way, I'm, you know, he just, he, he, he's open, but he's selectively open and it's enough to release that pressure. It's not everything, but it's something. And I think it's just that, that slight call to action, whatever circumstance you're in to just say a little something, uh, whether, you know, whether by proximity or, or with words, but it was really important. I think that we ended it with Jefferson. And we love that you, you touched on, you know, wanting to make it a horror and you, you have all these really horror techniques in this with the dolly zooms and you have just the way the frightening characters look and these giant spiders which really bothered us to be honest with you because when they turned into mini spiders we were both like oh sorry that's much that's a much worse <laughs> like the bad the big spider was pretty bad we're yeah. like, oh that's much sucks. worse the smaller ones and then when they yeah. became yeah. really tiny all over him we're like this is so much more unsettling um so to, to really to get to the point here 
what would you say excited you the most about kind of playing within that horror genre with this character? Yeah, great question. Thank you. Um, I I love horror movies. Um, I love scary movies. It's something that's just been with me for a long time. Um, as long as I've loved comics, as long as I've loved games, as long as I've loved movies. So to be honest, it was really just this, it was the idea that I could marry so many of my interests together, right? That made it attractive. Um, also, I personally deal with anxiety on a daily basis. I'm anxious right now, full disclosure. You know, it it lives right at easy for you. (laughs) (laughs) No, you guys are amazing. And it it, it really has nothing to do with, with you. I, I, this is such a good vibe and I'm nice and calm, but just as a person, my anxiety lives in me, in my gut. Right. And I, I think that so many people relate to that, uh, alone. It really, it's really scary. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and so when it came time to try to think about how, how do I show and relate to the world, how this feels? And then also how do I make this true to people that are, that are, you know, I don't want to say suffering, but contending with this in their lives when they're dealing with this every day, how does it feel? Well, I think the best way to answer that was, well, how does it feel for me? And I think if I can start with what's personal, if I can tell a highly personal situation, a highly personal story, then I think that that will eventually be more universal, right? That's the idea. We've all heard that saying, right? More personal, more universal. So if I can show what it's like for me to have a panic attack, which is scary, then maybe everyone else who has panic attacks will be able to resonate with that. Right. And so a lot of what Miles goes through is based off of, you know, some of my own real kind of brushes with anxiety, the hands uh, clenching up, not getting enough oxygen vision going. Uh, I, you know, mental noise stacking and snowballing into this kind of cacophony you can't really control. All of these things I've I've personally dealt with, and so I really wanted to put a, a large part of that in here. And horror, and you know, the idea behind using that genre, it just felt like the perfect envelope to kind of seal all of this in. Because to me, there's no better kind of pointed way to get people to focus than to scare them a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and make them feel how much they value their life in that moment, how much they value their experience. And I think that there's nothing like fear to get people to remember, oh, I value my safety. I value my experience. I value my story. I value my my mental health. Mm-hmm. That was the choice behind the the genre bend. I like that, and I and I love that we you know we get to see like we don't typically get to see a lot of superhero stories like within the world of horror. And I think being scared is is a great thing. I mean, I think that some of some of the films and shows that we watched growing up scared us, and I think we they humble us. Yeah, they, they humble us. Yeah, and like, yeah. you you take that with you, and I think that that's so important to have those emotions because it really helps you. I think grow and evolve as a person um from we're curious though too you know jefferson mentioned that he rented three movies what movies do you think he rented for for him and miles to watch oh gosh that's a great question um you know jefferson's he's a he's a real dad type so i think he's gonna go for some classics um if i were jefferson i think the original halloween would be in there oh yeah um if i were jefferson i think the original child's play is in there oh oh okay i i you know to me i you know I think I think the original is just pretty pretty solid. It's one of my favorites. For the last one, maybe he's got a newer one in there. Maybe the Baba Duke. Maybe Jefferson got a little uh, he got a little creative with his choices. Okay, and um, pick something a little modern. I think that's the three right there. <laughs> that's okay. really good. I like that. He that's... experimented with the Australian horror right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. We gotta love that. <laughs> yeah. Now, now for Miles has been synonymous to spider-man just as peter parker has been now for this generation why do you think audiences resonate so much with miles morales i mean he's just so cool i you know truthfully it's funny i i think that um i love miles and he means so much for representation and so many things like that and but truthfully, as a kid, I I found a lot of myself in Peter as well. You know, I the, the character of Spider-Man never really excluded me as a person. I think that was the power of Spider-Man, that anybody can wear the mask, right? In my opinion, Miles just validates that. 
Any, anyone can wear the mask. Okay, bet. You know, and then he puts it on and then he does it. He does an amazing job. And it's like we we know from the films he was never really meant to do it. It wasn't his it wasn't his destiny. And yet he finds himself uh in this unique position where he's like the coolest one. And he gets to have all these cool powers that he never was meant to have. I think it says so much about us and our potential, uh, our capacity for growth and change, our capacity to do things we didn't think we were capable of, uh, other people don't think we're capable of. Miles, to me, just validates the fact that anybody can wear that mask. And and his character really represents it in a way that Peter, I, I think, you know, Peter's off doing, Peter held it down for, you know, 30 plus years, right? Peter's busy. Peter's back hurts. He's been carrying the whole thing. <laughs> but but Miles is able to kind of show us a unique perspective of honoring Peter and carrying on that legacy and giving us a hope that we can do it too. I love Miles. He's oh, incredible. Yeah. He really is. And, and again, speaking of unique perspectives, you really gave us an incredible one with the spider within. So we just want to, we want to be respectful of your time. We're so grateful that you were able to share it with us today. Um, and we're just so happy that this film is coming out for everyone to watch and for everyone to have access to and hopefully, you know, get them to think on themselves a little bit more and what's going on with them and seek for answers if they need to Hope as well and reach out, right? 100%. Yeah, that's right. That's the intention, you know, reach out, say something. You're not in this alone. Everybody's dealing with something, even Miles Morales. So get open about it. Um, you guys have been a wonderful. I hope I get to talk to you again. This was awesome. Yeah, please. Day. Yeah, you are welcome back anytime, Jarrell. Thank you so much for your time. We cannot wait to see what you get to work on next. So excited. And where things go with Beyond the Spider-Verse. So we're, we're so stoked for you, man. I'll see you guys soon, all right? Thank you. Thank you, Jarrell. Peace.